Hi, welcome to a podcast on Dalton's Law and also manometer problems. This goes into detail about how these problems work, just in case you need them. Um, they're very simple, and so first we're going to go into Dalton's Law partial pressures. Now, you got to remember, Dalton was alive in 1766. His idea of an atom looked like this. That's an atom. No protons, no electrons, no neutrons. It wasn't because he was dumb, because he wasn't. He was very smart. It's just because they didn't have the equipment. Protons, electrons, and neutrons hadn't even been discovered yet. So he at least knew that elements acted different, and he figured out ratios of like water, that there was two hydrogens for every one oxygen, or for sodium chloride, that there was one sodium for one chlorine, which was a big discovery back then. He did a lot of uh, work. But that's besides the point. The point is for our podcast that we're doing right now is that he found a relationship between partial pressures. So what he said is if you have a container, and again, I can use a balloon because that's an easy example, and you have gas A and gas B and gas C, or in this case, gas 1, 2, and 3 in this container, right? That goes with, goes with this diagram right here. So if you know the pressure of A and the pressure of B and the pressure of C, or the pressure of 1 and the pressure of 2 and the pressure in 3, then you know the total pressure in the balloon because what happens in the balloon? A is hitting the side of the walls, B is hitting the side of the walls, C is hitting the side of the walls. 1 is hitting the side of the walls, 2 is hitting the side of the walls, 3 is hitting the side of the walls. And that equals the total pressure. So if you add the parts, they equal the total. Make sense? Remember though, they didn't really know much about anything back then about gases. They weren't sure. So what's this mean? That means if you take the total atmosphere, this is 101.3 kPa, and you add up all the parts like oxygen and nitrogen and argon and hydrogen, excuse me, water and carbon dioxide, these are just some of the gases. Um, if this is just in a sample of this type of air, whatever this air is right here, these parts, these five gases, right, gas one, gas two, gas three, gas four, and gas five, if you add up all those numbers, they equal 101.3. Now, that's handy because what if you didn't know carbon dioxide's pressure? Well, what do you know? The total pressure, according to Dalton's law, is equal to the pressure, and so we write it, of oxygen plus the pressure of nitrogen plus the pressure of argon plus the pressure of water vapor plus the pressure of carbon dioxide which if we didn't know it, we could take 20.9 plus 78.1 plus 0.97 plus 1.28 plus x, and that would be equal to the total pressure, which is 101.3. And all you do is solve for x, and you would get that 0.05, which is what they told us in the first place. But that's how you could figure it out. Okay, and it's important. You see tanker trucks driving down the the road, it, if you put too much gas in a container, it can explode. So there's different things that you need to understand. Um, you have pressurized airplanes, you know, pressurized containers. So it, it becomes dangerous if we don't know how these things work out and we don't know the total pressure. Now, what did we say about a container? If I have a balloon, okay, and if this balloon is full of nitrogen and hydrogen, Okay, so this is a what if. What keeps that balloon inflated again? The molecules on the inside, right? Hitting the sides of my container. Hit, 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 hit. The outside is hitting as well. All right? So those pressures are equal, the inside and the outside. So if you look right here inside my balloon again, how do we figure this out and what are they asking? Okay, and I don't really have a problem down, but for, for starters, they have three moles of nitrogen and four moles of hydrogen in a balloon. And they want to know the total moles. Well, that's pretty easy, isn't it? What do you do? You add three and four and you have seven total moles. Now, what's interesting about this is that if I know there's seven total moles, What's keeping the balloon inflated? The moles. And those moles are equal to the total pressure. 
because those moles are pressure. Pressure are moles. They are the same. So if I told you this, if I told you I had a balloon, same balloon, and I knew that this balloon right here had a total pressure of 722 millimeters of mercury, and I wanted to know the partial pressure of each gas. Well, what are my gases in here again? I've got two gases inside, nitrogen and hydrogen. And what do I know about those? I know I have three moles of nitrogen and I have four moles of hydrogen. I know the total moles is seven moles. I know that moles hit the inside of my balloon and that my moles equal my pressure. So I know for a fact, by doing this Dalton's Law of Total Pressures right here, right, that I know that these are equal to each other. So I know that this 722 millimeters of mercury is at that pressure because I have seven moles that are hitting the inside. So these two are equal to each other. So I want to find the partial pressure. What's the partial pressure of nitrogen? What's the partial pressure of hydrogen equal to the total pressure of 722 millimeters of mercury? Well, the only thing I can go with is that I have, for every three moles of nitrogen, I have seven total moles. Correct? And that for every four moles of hydrogen, I have seven total moles. So do you see? how these right here are the fractions of those gases out of the hole. There's three moles of nitrogen for a total of seven moles. So it's three sevenths of that gas is nitrogen. Correct? So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this balloon down here so we have some room. And if you understand this, you can kind of fast forward through this, but I'm going through step by step for you. All right, so I'm going to change to black here. I know that 3 sevenths of that gas is nitrogen. And I know that 4 sevenths of that gas is hydrogen. Now, that means that 3 sevenths of my pressure, which is 722, right? is nitrogen, and that 4 sevenths of my 722 is hydrogen. So when you do this, and you take 3 over 7 times 2722, let me get a calculator, and you take 4 over 7, which is 722, that you get Three oh nine point four three millimeters of mercury. And if I wanted to subtract at this point I could, but I'm going to do four times seven twenty two divided by seven. And that gives me four twelve point five seven. And with some rounding errors we'll see what that works out to be. But if you add those two together, I get 722. How about that? This is labeled millimeters of mercury. So do you see I took the part moles over total moles? That's what part I have that's hitting the sides of my container. And I multiply it by the total moles in the or excuse me, total pressure in the container. And that's equal to uh, that helps me get partial pressures for each one. Okay, now we've done some in class like this, but um, go back over this if it helps you. All right, and I can do another one if you need to in class. Let me know. All right, now, here's another key problem. This was a gas, an unknown gas is collected over water. Key words, collected over water. Okay? At a certain temperature and a certain pressure. They always want to know what the pressure of the dry gas is. And they always give you the pressure of water, okay, at a certain temperature. 
So these temperatures match. So let's just say that uh, this problem is at 23 degrees Celsius. How do I know what the pressure of water is at, at 23 degrees Celsius? Well, they either looked it up and gave it to me, or I've got to look by my vapor pressure of water chart. And look at this. At zero degrees, I have a pressure of 0.6. What happens as I increase the temperature? Don't I get more and more water vapor? We know that here in Washington, D.C., Leesburg area because, man, it's humid here in the summer. So if the temperature goes up, then heck yeah, you're going to have um, a higher pressure, right? Higher water vapor. So what are we looking at? We're looking at 23. And at 23 degrees, I have 2.8 kPa, which is uh, contributed to me by water vapor. So I want to know what the pressure of the dry gas is. So an unknown gas, it really doesn't matter what this unknown gas is. But my key terms are that I'm collecting it over water. Okay? And they usually give you a kPa. So let's just say it's 101.3 kPa. All right? Okay? And I just changed the terms here. So let's use this one. Okay? So look at this. Why did they give me this right here? Because they looked it up on a chart. Right? They give that to me. My key terms here in this problem, because we're actually doing a problem now, so I'm going to explain it to you at the same time, is collected over water. They give me that it's being collected at 27 degrees Celsius. That's where this 27 degrees Celsius is. And they looked it up in a table and gave it to me. They also tell me the pressure. They want to know what the pressure of the dry gas is. Well, let's understand what this means, OK? So what this means right here is that this is an experiment. And this experiment right here, you have some kind of substance in this test tube. And in this test tube right here is this, this chemical. And this chemical, when it's decomposed, see the Bunsen burner, produces a gas. And that gas goes through this tube all the way here, down, and it bubbles into this container and goes out. Now, what did this container look like to begin with? This container looked like this, OK? So if you look at this, the container before I put that gas into it was full. So see right here? This gas is bubbling in right here, bubble, 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 through this tube up in here. And as it bubbles up, it fills up the top, and it goes down and fills whatever gas I'm collecting. In this case, I don't know what it is, right? It says an unknown gas. And I'm collecting it over water. Well, where's the water? Well, gee, duh, here's the water, right? OK. And so not only is there gas in here, but there's also water vapor. So there's an unknown gas, and there's also water vapor. All right? Now, how much water vapor? Well, looky here. At 27 degrees Celsius, I have 26.5 torr. All right? So what am I trying to find out? What's the pressure of the dry gas? So let's go ahead and figure this out. OK? There we go. All right. So let me just go ahead here and make this bigger so we can look at it. So I want to know, in this container right here, I have Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. The total pressure is equal to the pressure of my dry gas. In this case, I don't know what it is, do I? plus the pressure of water vapor. Why? Because the inside pressure is equal to the outside pressure. Right? I don't see the walls of this container exploding. Right? There's no glass crashing anywhere or plastic. I don't see the walls smushing in. Think of your water bottle. It just sits there. The inside pressure is equal to the outside pressure. And inside your average water bottle that you have, or soda bottle, there is a gas. Okay? In soda, it's carbon dioxide. And there's also water vapor, because soda is basically water. So what do we know? We know this is collected over water. Key thing right here. So this is what you think of right here when you think of collected over water. This experiment right here. Okay, Collected over water at 27 degrees Celsius. The only reason I need that is to look it up on a chart. But looky here, they gave it to me. Okay, So what's the pressure of water? 26.5 torr. And what's my total pressure? 3.8 atmospheres. OK, well, this is a problem in this case, because I have 3.8 atmospheres here. And that's equal to my x, my dry gas, plus 26.5 torr. Do these match? No, they don't. So that means that I need 
to go ahead and change one to the other, either tour to atmospheres or atmospheres to tour. So let's just say right now that we're going to go ahead and change the tour to atmospheres. So how do we do that? 26.5 tour divided by 760. See what's really important to know these by heart, right? Times 1. So I do that in my calculator. Should have yours handy so that I'm not the only one that's doing this. And that is equal to point zero. So I'm going to go ahead and cross this off. I'm going to go ahead and erase it. Just replace it. Okay? Why? Because I want my atmospheres to match. So that's point zero three four eight. What the heck? Atmospheres. Okay? So the pressure of my water vapor is point zero three four eight atmospheres. The pressure of my dry gas, they're both in here, right? I know this and I don't know this, but I know it's equal to 3.8 atmospheres. So I take 3.8 and I subtract 0 0.0348 and I get 3.765 or 3.77 atmospheres for my unknown gas. That's my pressure. This is just a Dalton's law and the key is it's collected over water. Try another. Come on. There you go. Oxygen gas is collected over water at 27 degrees Celsius and 103.2 kPa. What is the pressure of the dry gas? What's your key term here? Collected over water. That tells you it's a Dalton's Law problem. So I know at least I'm going to write this down, or if not, it's going to come to mind. The pressure total is equal to the pressure now. What's the dry gas here? In this case, dry oxygen gas plus the pressure of water vapor. Because in my mind, I need to keep in mind that this is what we're doing, right? We're collecting a gas over water. And what are we doing? We have the gas in here. I've got water vapor and I've got oxygen. Now, if you bought oxygen, if you were at a hospital and you wanted to buy oxygen to breathe with, would you want to buy water vapor too? Or do you just want to buy oxygen? I just want to buy oxygen. I don't want to have extra water vapor in there. You can always have a humidifier that humidifies your gas, right? So you get ripped off if you don't dry it out, okay? So that's the problem you need to look at. And what are we going to do here? We're going to look at a vapor pressure table because look at that. They don't give you the pressure of water. So looky here. These pressures are in kPa, yippee, okay? And what do I know? I know that I'm at 27 degrees. So 27 degrees, my vapor pressure is 3.6. Okay, they usually give it to you, but in this case, they're going to go ahead and tell us to use a chart. Okay, so it's 3.6. This is not working on it either way, is it? Let's write it smaller. There you go. All right? So what's true here? I know that my oxygen gas total is 103. 0.2 kPa when I add it to my water vapor. That's my pressure in my atmosphere, so it's also equal to the inside. I don't know my oxygen gas pressure, but I do know my water vapor pressure is 3.6 kPa. So how many kPa's do I have for my dry oxygen gas if I were to dry it out? Well, if you take 103.2 Okay, and I subtract 3.6, I thought I made a mistake because I think I'm 101.3, but that's what the problem told me, right? Okay, and I take 3.6, I get an answer of 99.6 kPa, and that's the pressure of my dry oxygen gas. Now that's important because if I was going to fill an order and I needed 100 kilopascals, I wouldn't have enough, would I, for pressure? All right, now, manometer problems. Let's think. When you do manometer problems, this is a manometer, and typically it's open to the atmosphere. It can be closed, too, though. It can be closed off. Most, most likely it's not, though. So you have atmosphere pressure that's pushing down. All these molecules are hitting the insides, and they're pushing down on this uh, column of mercury. 
In the meantime, you have some kind of gas in here, either a known gas or an unknown gas. And that gas, the same thing, the molecules, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. The molecules of gas, it must sound aloud. The molecules of gas are actually hitting the inside of this container, and they're pushing down on this side. So what is true? If you look at this right here, these are equal. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. So what's true about the manometer levels? They're equal. So you have to ask yourself when you do these kind of problems, which side is pushing harder? Well, none of them is pushing harder. So what's true? That means that the gas pressure is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere. So if you knew the gas, which was maybe, let's say, 720 millimeters of mercury, Okay, what would the atmospheric pressure be? Okay, it would also be 720 millimeters of mercury. And there's no difference in the height because there's no difference in the height, period. Okay, makes sense? So gas particles are pushing manometers. Remember I told you there's a closed tube manometer? Right, this is closed here, isn't it? Right, closed off. And this is actually open to the atmosphere. So if you look, there's some different situations here. There's gases that are pushing harder. Oh, dear me. I need to erase this, don't I? Okay. So if you look, who's winning on this one? Which side is pushing harder? You see this level here? It is not equal. It's not equal, is it? There's a level here. Let me use red so we can actually see. There's a level here and there's a level here. So who's winning? The gas inside is winning. Right? By how much? 105 millimeters. All right, what about this situation? Look at these levels. This level's way down here, this level's way up here. Wow, the atmospheric pressure is really high. It's pushing really hard on that mercury, and this is losing. It's less. This is winning. It's more. All right, if you, if you lose, you get less money, if you're playing some kind of game or something. Okay, so this is winning. It's more pressure, and this is losing, so there's less pressure. Okay?